Hi, everyone. My name is Nevin DiParlo, and I'm so far Ocean's commercial business lead. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you more about the Spotter 3. Uh, so far, Ocean is an ocean intelligence company headquartered in San Francisco, California. We're a team of about 85 engineers, scientists, and business professionals who are on a mission to connect the world's oceans to power a more sustainable future. Uh, the reason that we're on this mission is because there's a large data gap that exists both offshore and nearshore, largely due to the fact that ocean sensors have really never been designed for scale, uh, especially not IoT connected sensors. And we're fundamentally changing that by building the largest ocean sensor network in the world using our spotter platform. And today we're going to talk really specifically about the Spotter 3, a new product that we're about to launch. It's the next generation Spotter, features a lot of new capabilities uh, and exciting developments that we'll talk more about in a few minutes. As I mentioned on the first slide, the reason why we're on this mission is because there's this data gap, uh, both offshore and nearshore. And this is largely because ocean sensors are just not designed for scale. Uh, in this image, you have all the way on the far left, a really expensive, really large traditional med ocean buoy, and all the way on the far right, a very small compact spotter buoy. Um, the barriers of cost and complexity that are traditionally associated with ocean sensing are just extremely high. And we're breaking all of those down. We're moving from few and very very expensive and difficult to use to many, many, many sensors that are low cost and very easy to use. And this is the trend that we hope to, to continue to see and push forward as a company. So when we talk more specifically about the spotter itself, what it really unlocks is ocean data collection at a fraction of the cost. It's 10x as cost effective as a traditional platform, even more so than some of the larger buoys you saw in that last slide. It's extremely accessible. It's easy to deploy. There's two-way real-time communication that's enabled via either Iridium and Cellular, something new we're gonna talk about. Um, and there's easy and immediate access to the data via both an API if you're building out your own application or a dashboard if you just want a way to quickly reference uh, what's happening at the location where your spotter's deployed. Um, in terms of power, there's really no batteries or maintenance that needs to happen. Uh, it's powered by the sun and it works everywhere and anywhere always. Um, it's extremely flexible and unlocks new sensor integrations using Bristlemouth, our open standard interface. Uh, and they're extremely robust. We've collected over 10 million ocean hours, dropped these out of airplanes and deployed in some of the harshest environments around the world. Uh, and they stand the, the test of time on, on that front, both offshore and nearshore. Um, lastly, they're extremely easy to use. This is one of the key variables that we're trying to break down in terms of the complexity of deploying ocean sensors and collecting data. Over 500 spotters have been deployed by completely untrained personnel around the world. When we talk about the capabilities of the spotter today, you know, the spotter is really a scientific grade med ocean buoy. Um, it's powered by the sun and it has real time connectivity that's enabled by both satellite and cellular. Every single spotter is going to measure as a standard wave spectrum, which includes significant wave height, period, spread, direction, wind speed and direction as a proxy of the wave spectrum, sea surface current and direction when the spotter is deployed as a drifter, sea surface temperature, atmospheric pressure, and also rain detection. This is a new feature we're hoping to unlock uh, in the coming months. And at the bottom, we really just show here um, our process for how we think about ocean IoT in terms of measuring and collecting data, processing it on board the spotter, sending it to the cloud, and then making it easily accessible through both dashboards and APIs for you to use on the fly. So what's new with the Spotter 3? Um, well, there's a lot of new things, but one of the features that we're most excited about is an integrated barometer. This is the newest sensor that's on board the Spotter. It now can make barometric pressure readings at the sea surface. This is the platform's first direct atmospheric pressure measurement uh, and atmospheric measurement in general. And it greatly improves the usefulness for weather forecasting applications specifically. And in addition to that, for coastal applications, having an onboard barometer also allows for more accurate water level measurements if you're deploying a smart mooring with a bottom mounted pressure sensor, which is key for storm surge use cases and other extreme weather monitoring. In terms of accuracy, uh, the barometer that we've integrated on the spotter has excellent accuracy, plus or minus one millibar, uh, and operates from zero to 50 degrees C. So 
The Spotter 3 is also a lot more powerful. Uh, this is something we're really excited about. The new Spotter has 10x the onboard compute power as the V2 Spotter or the last generation Spotter while consuming 40% less energy. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, it means that we can process a lot more data on the Spotter to power real-time alerting systems and event-based detection, like significant weather events. Um, and we also have the ability to operate continuously in more extreme latitudes where sunlight uh, is less available or there's a, a lack of sunlight uh, to power the spotter year round. One other thing that the new processing capabilities are also gonna unlock is integration of more sensors like hydrophones that we can ultimately process on board the spotter um, as new payloads become available to enable new insights to be delivered to end users interested in monitoring the subsurface environment. In terms of connectivity, something that we've been asked for a number of times is cellular, right? So we've listened and we've now delivered. Uh, the new Spotter 3 offers both cellular and satellite connection. I think that's a really important distinction to make. We're not offering two different SKUs of the Spotter where you have either cellular or satellite. Every Spotter will have the option for both. Um, so if you're in range of a cell tower, it will use cellular and you'll save a lot of money on your data transmission costs. But if you also have an application where you need to go offshore and you're not in, in an area with good cell connectivity, it will still default to the satellite connection and you'll get the data when you need it and where you need it. Um, in terms of the other capabilities that cellular unlocks, you know, it's, it's not just connectivity and saving costs in near shore environments. It also allows for a lot more data to be transmitted at a fraction of the price as well. Um, it has increased sampling frequency that unlocks high bandwidth use cases that were really Really previously just impractical, impractical due to the cost of satellite data transmission. Um, and ultimately, this is going to enable a lot more functionality in the future through over-the-air firmware upgrades. And one thing I can't harp on enough is that the spotter that you purchase, the Spotter 3, will be more powerful in the future. Um, a lot of new upgrades like rain detection or event-based alerting will be released, and you'll be able to update that via firmware on your Spotter 3. So the Spotter is just going to keep getting better, and you're not just investing in the platform now, you're also investing in the platform for the future. One of the last things we're really excited about is just the durability of the Spotter. Um, as I mentioned, we've collected over 10 million ocean hours with our Spotters around the world, and we're really confident that this is the best one yet, and it's just even more robust and marinized than ever before. Um, a few of the features that we're excited about are new USB-C connectors that streamline the data transfer and power supply process, has a cleaner interface that improves the visibility during both setup and deployment. We have parred down the desiccant storage system to simplify the peak or the pack replacement process to allow for a better user experience, user interface. Um, and there's also splash protection, which is a really small feature, but something that safeguards the USB-C and SD card ports. Um, a heavy duty self-contained flange also allows 360 support for the e-box that will allow for uh, higher impact deployments such as airdrop, as we see here in this video. Pretty awesome video showing a splash down of, of a spotter three. Um, and these are just some of the new capabilities that we're really excited about. This is our best, most capable platform yet. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us and chat more about the Spotter 3 and learn how it could be of value for your project.